Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Panic Mode and welcome to a brand new tutorial video. Um, it's been a while as I always say in the beginning of my videos because I don't always um, get around to making video tutorials as I should be. But today I'd like to do a pretty basic video and show you guys my process in making a dubstep growl because I feel it's kind of important um, to know step by step how a dubstep growl is made so it's easier for people who want to make dubstep it's easier for them to learn how it's done so uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it inside of Serum as um, normally everybody would make their dubstep bases inside of Serum there are other plugins like Massive um, FM8 can be used sometimes and if you're an FL Studio user maybe you'll be using like something like uh, Citrus or Harmer but today we're going to be focusing on Serum if I ever get a handle on any of those plugins I'll be sure to consider making tutorial videos about how to use those plugins and making dubstep um, bases in those plugins I don't have a lot of them yet but I will be getting them eventually as I sh as I'm sure I uh, as I'm sure some of my fans will be um, interested in seeing how they're made um, and also, we're almost at 100 subscribers, which is really cool. Um, I know I'm being humble when I'm saying this, but I've been making YouTube videos for like probably six years, the same time as long as the same uh, amount of time I've been making uh, YouTube, uh, music for. I've been making YouTube videos for the same amount of time I've been making uh, YouTube videos for. And I've really noticed that like, now that I'm doing this channel, I'm getting a lot more people into it because it's content that people actually want to watch, and uh, it's really cool. So I, I I'm really thankful that we're almost at 100 subscribers. Um, hopefully, if you guys enjoyed the video, if there are any new viewers that are enjoying my videos, please be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate and uh, I really appreciate it, and I love knowing that I have a following. All right, so let me just save this. So let's begin. Um, so the first thing we are going to do in making this is now, now I, I gotta I gotta I gotta stress this is this is my process. This might not be how you would want to make your dubstep bases, but this is my process. This is how I prefer to make them. So we'll just go them. We'll just go in the way that I usually do it. So when I start any dubstep base, the first thing I do is I put on my post processing rack, which is the meat rack. Some people don't really agree with this, but it's what I do. So I start out. Uh, I start out with a basic saw wave. I put it at like the lowest octave, which is well, not this is a, this isn't the lowest octave, but I put it at the zero octave, and uh, then I just start increasing knobs on the meat rack. Now I apologize that this is a bit loud. I will turn down the volume of serum. And that's already off to a great start. So then I'm going to put on a vocoder and I'm going to put on a phaser. So with the phaser, I'm just trying to find a nice vowel -y, um, area. It's usually around here where I find a nice vowel. But we can definitely tweak these later. The vocoder is here for um, dynamic purposes. I, I find without a vocoder, my sounds are usually uh, not as dynamic as they should be. Um, so I just take a vocoder, put it on a modulator, so it's modulating the sound with itself. And then you click on the enhance button, which just normalizes the spectrum of the sound. And then I take the range and I put it all the way up to uh, 18 kilohertz, which is just um, to make sure it, it, it um, modulates all of the frequencies in the frequency spectrum. And then we can just play with the depth, but we can do that when we're actually working on the sound. So just a couple more things. I just want to put on a soft OTT preset, and all this is is just, um, it's an OTT, but without the mid EQ, and the time's all the way at 100%, and the amount's at 50%. And this is only because with the vocoder on, it kind of gets rid of a bit of the highs, which I would like to keep. So then we're going to put on an EQ, and we're going to save this for later. 
One more, one last thing I want to put on before we actually start working on the sound is I'm going to put on a bit of room. Now, I always do this stuff beforehand because I find, um, I find that I can control the sound according to these uh, uh, settings. Um, I've noticed that if I if I make a sound and then add everything else on later, I find that it just kind of it just kind of ruins the sound because uh, I could probably make a better sound if I had everything set up beforehand. So um, let's finally open up Serum. Um, by the way, this is a great Serum skin. I forget the name of it. I think it's called Promethium. Yes, Promethium for Serum. This is a great Serum skin. I love it. So when I start any um, when I start any Serum preset, the first thing I do is I look for a nice wavetable. Now I have a lot of wavetables here. I even have some of my own self-made ones, but I'm going to use one of my self-made ones. I typically use squarified wavetables, something like this. And basically all that is is that, like, let's say, let's get a random wavetable here. Let's get one of the monster wavetables. As you see, that wavetable sounds really grimy and valley. If I go into the um, wavetable edit section, which is on the, you click on that pencil icon, and you click this drop down menu, you go to multis, and you hit process squarify, and then you hit normalize. What's this do? What this is doing is cutting out all the, uh, I think it's cutting out all the even overtones, as showing here. That's basically what it's doing. It's it's only keeping the odd overtones. And then it sounds a bit more squarey, obviously. That's what it's supposed to do. So, but that's just an example of what it does. I'm going to take the UFO squarify that I made here because I really like this wavetable. This is actually just the wavetable version of a sound coming from a cymatics pack. I'll just look for it right here. Uh, I think it's uh, dubstep. It is. I think it's that sound. It's either that sound or that sound. I don't know. But um, I just took it. I I sampled it in. I cut out the parts I didn't like. And then I just uh, I just crossfaded all the frames. And I squarified it. And then I had this white table. There's also a version that's not squarified. Which is that one. But I like this one. This one works a lot for me. So let's start working on a sound. So actually, before I start doing any wavetable modulation, I'm going to do the volume modulation first. One key thing to mention when you're making dubstep bass is that you should you should uh, separate every single modulation, or not every single modulation, but separate some of your modulation uh, patterns into different LFOs. Um, for example, I like to separate the wavetable modulation and the level modulation just because like when I have uh, the wavetable modulation separated, it gives me more control and I can be more experimental and find better tones that work for the sound. So um, yeah, let's just uh, make a nice little shape here, something that sounds natural. And I'm just kind of going for like a bro steppy kind of dubstep bass in this preset here. Pretty cool. All right, let's get some wavetable modulation going on in here. And this is what I mean when you have your when you have your wavetable modulation and your volume modulation in separate LFO sections, you could just you can just be more experimental and find which tone works best instead of like tweaking this constantly. You know, you can set the whole thing. You can set it from zero to one hundred percent, and you can just mess around inside of the LFO really really easily and just figure out what sound works the best. Another thing I should mention is that this can take hours depending on how um, how quickly like you find a sound that you like. If if it takes you a few hours, it might take you a few hours. I know I've had bases where I took a few out where it took me a few hours to make something that I really liked. Um, but just keep that in mind. It's not an instant kind of thing. This can take a long time, so be patient. If you're not a patient person. You might want to look into like getting pre getting other other made presets and then just kind of tweaking them a bit.
But if you want to be original, be patient because it can take time to make something that you really like. I actually really like that. I think I'll go with that sound right there. So then another thing we're going to do is we're going to add in um, some FM modulation. And uh, one kind of FM modulation I like to do is I like to take the second oscillator. I like to put the level on zero. And then I will take a sine wave and put it two octaves up. And then uh, I'm going to go into the FM section. And let's use another LFO for this. And as you hear, it creates this nice... It creates this nice um, grimy kind of sound, which I, I really enjoy. And you can mess around with the octaves as well. Sometimes three octaves up works pretty good. It's all about finding the tone that you think works best for your sound or for the vision that you have in your head. I think that sounds pretty cool. And you don't just have to stick with simple sine waves. You can also get a bit more interesting and pick other si uh, other types of wavetables to use for your FM modulation. For example, I like to use this one. This is basic SJW. It has some very nice, uh, I find it has some very nice um, wavetable modulation you can use in here. And let's just add this to the LFO we're using for the FM modulation. And then I'm also going to do something cool. I'm going to take uh, the sync warping mode and I'll attach that to LFO 3. Let's also just save this so it doesn't crash and I lose everything. <laughs> that sounds actually pretty cool. Now one thing I really enjoy doing is I take this random knob and I put it to 0%. Now I do this because when you have a when you have a sound that's at like 100% random, that means that the this phase position here will start on a different area every time. And that can sound kind of weird in my opinion because you can like every time you press a note the tone might change. So if you have the random at 0 it stays the same for every time you press the note and you can go around with this phase knob and pick a pick a like a, a tone that you really like I like that one right there Another thing to mention is don't be afraid to mess around. Um, don't be afraid to, twi twi uh, to twist knobs every once in a while. One thing you should know is that subtlety can be key. Even the slightest difference from this FM knob can create a really cool sound, as you can see here. I just pushed this up a little bit. It sounds a lot cooler, in my opinion, here. I think that sounds great, but let me just work on this LFO a bit more.
All right, now it's time to get onto the filters now that we've had most of the uh, oscillator A and B uh, tweaked. Let's go onto the filters. So for most dubstep basses, you would typically use a high pass filter. Now you don't have to use a high pass filter. You can also use a band pass filter. Some people even like to use the band reject filter, which can get kind of interesting sometimes, but I prefer to use that the band reject filter on like rhythm basses, for example, not necessarily bro step basses. If you have a bro step bass, I typically go for the high notch twelve uh, the high notch twelve filter because it just it just has the most vowelly sound in my opinion. So uh, let's take the first LFL and we'll modulate the cutoff. And right off the bat, it's already sounding. It's, it's already starting to sound great. So let's take this. Uh, let's modulate this resonate. Uh, this uh, resonating filter. And then we'll do this uh, notch filter, which is in the name H N stands for high notch, or high pass plus notch. Um, because uh, this is also a notch filter you can put in here. And that just makes it sound really vowelly. So far so good, I really like this sound actually. So let's go into the effects section and we'll add some other effects in here. I really like this uh, hyper effect because it creates a nice uh, phasey sound. And I'll put the rate up in the detune up a bit because that, that makes it sound a lot, uh, a lot more squishy. And then we'll add LFO1 to it. Don't go too crazy with this because this might affect the stereo image. And if you affect the stereo image in a really harsh way, it can cause problems when your mix is in mono. So just be careful. I think around there is pretty good. Let's add some distortion now as well. Recently, I've been really a big fan of downsampling and then just modulating the mix because it creates a nice uh, high end which can help fill up the sound. I really like that. <clears throat> so one thing I do on almost every bass is add static chorus, which is an effect that I don't know, it always works. It, it never doesn't work. And basically what this is, is you can do this right inside of Serum. You just take the, you put everything to the left except for the mix, and then you change the filter here from a low pass filter to a high pass filter. It's that low pass filter for default. And I just have this um, as a preset so I can just click on this drop down menu and click it and then we'll say it will uh, load to it automatically. And then modulate the delay one knob. As you can see, that sounds really cool. You can also modulate the delay two. Delay two is a bit more drastic though. But I suppose for this one, we won't really use it. One more thing I'll do uh, just for the sake of showing you some new techniques is I take uh, this filter, um, this filter effects rack and I'll go into the, I'll change the filter type to a comes minus filter and this is a really resonating filter which adds like this really cool this can add these really cool artifacts uh, you just take the cutoff filter and place it around here usually around here is usually the best place to put it in my opinion around 60 Hertz and then you take an LFO I'll use LFO 1 and you put the resonance up to it <laughs> Now this really works for nice um, virtual riot style rhythm basses, but if you're considerate with it, it can create some really cool overtones. See, with that it sounds pretty cool, but with it it sounds like it sounds like really energetic. I feel. 
So I guess there we have it. We have a nice um, dubstep bass instead of serum. So let's also compare what everything sounds like, uh, what all the uh, effects sound like without um, the um, with what the sound sounds like without all the effects. As you see, that sounds really boring. You can't barely even hear it. Like that sounds amazing. The vocoder too. Like this sounds dynamic as heck, and it also has some feedback. But if you put on the vocoder, it just makes it it just makes it sound like a bit more tight. And I really like that. And you can mess around with the uh, depth. You can use this uh, depth knob and put it all the way up to two hundred percent if you like those kind of squelchy kind of you know vomit step bases. But I typically like them around uh, 80%, almost 100%. And the formats work too. I try not to be too drastic with this because this kind of messes up the sound. Typically, I'll just leave it on zero. And then on the filter, you can play around with this until it, you find this nice valley sound that you think works well with the uh, bass you're making. I think that works. This envelope knob sometimes also um, adds some um, adds some uh, valiness to the sound as well. It says in the uh, info section that it uh, controls the intensity of the envelope follower. So you can turn it from left to right. So as a whole, this sound, I feel, is really good. Last but not least... Before I uh, finish any sound, I'm going to be EQing it because I know there's always going to be a lot of harsh frequencies when you add all these kinds of effects. As you can see, especially in the top end. But uh, to get rid of all this, uh, what I recommend you guys do is you just enable all your peaking EQs and then you just put them on a high resonant, on a high resonant, and then you just kind of like with every sound, you just kind of go along. And find which frequencies uh, sound the most harsh to the ear. So as you see, without the high, uh, without the EQ, sounds a bit more like uh, sounds a bit more pleasant to the human ear. With the EQ, it sounds like sorry. With the EQ, it sounds more pleasant to the human ear. But we did lose a bit of volume, so to add that back we would compress it. And it's good to compress it either way because um, even if you don't have an EQ on it, it's good to compress it anyways because um, of the reverb. Um, some some roomy elements could affect the dynamics of the sound. So it's good to compress it anyway. Just put the attack down a bit, maybe the release down a bit as well. And just play with the threshold. And just make the put the makeup game back up. As you see, that sounds really nice in my opinion. So let's just go over the issues of subs because one other thing you'll probably notice is that this sound doesn't have a sub because I prefer to have the sub on an external channel rather than inside the patch. If you like them inside the patch, you can, but um, when you have all this post-processing, it just kind of ruins the sound. So um, I prefer to have it outside of the patch. So let me just put a note down here. On the key of E. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put this in an audio form. I'm going to resample this into an audio form so I can see where the sound starts and where it ends. Which is a pretty standard thing I do. And I don't need this on because I already have the patch open. This is just so I can see where the sound starts. And then what I'll do is I'll take this MIDI track, 
I will put a serum on it. And I will set this, uh, the oscillator to a, so, a sine wave. And then I will put this on here. Oops. Let me just rename this channel to sub. And color the clip. And then I'm going to put on this uh, effect rack that I made for it called Subify. And this is very simple. This is just a warm up lows preset, which is found inside of Ableton underneath the um, saturator. It's just uh, right here. You can just drag and drop it right into your uh, effects chain. And then you have a limiter just to boost the hell out of it. And then an EQ to get rid of the clicky frequencies that are usually in the high end. Now it's going to sound really loud, but just lower down the volume and find like a moderate, find a moder uh, moderate it and see if you can find a good amount. So now we'll just shape the sub so it matches the um, it matches the LFO shape of the base. Um, so we'll just look at the waveform and we'll just kind of align it. It won't be perfect, but it's not that big of a deal uh, if it's not perfect. Uh, it just needs to sound somewhat good, you know. Otherwise, it's just not gonna it's it's not gonna sound like the sub is actually there. That's a thing. And there we go. And that's how you make a dubstep bass inside of Serum. So I hope you guys really enjoyed and I hope you guys learned something new. Um, I try my best to make these videos because I do have a speech impediment. So it's kind of hard for me to sometimes talk um, if you haven't noticed already. But I hope you guys learned something new. And if you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe. I would love to see new people on here engaging with my videos. Uh, there will be a free preset link down in the description if you want this patch, although it won't really have any of the post-processing on it, but you can take the raw sound of it without any of the post-processing and you can just tweak it and see how it works with your post-processing uh, uh, decisions because um, I think uh, you guys can get really creative if you just, uh, you know, look into it and see an experiment with uh, all the different uh, effects you might have inside of your DAW. So, um, yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.